where you muscle to. The signal come from neuron need to be transferred into muscle. So the muscle part need to create the end play potential. That's the electrical signal from the muscle. And to create the end play potential, you need nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So that's the receptor bind with acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter released by neuron. It's a non-selective cation channel. So when acetylcholine released from the neuron, this receptor open, and sodium gonna flow in because sodium is high outside, low inside, and potassium gonna flow out. Potassium is high inside, low outside, and the net result is positive inside because sodium flow in is much faster than potassium flow out. So it turned out inside become more positive, and due to the net result is sodium flow in, and the inside become more positive. So that's the end play potential. So the signal come from the neuron. That's the neuron's axon terminal. You're going to release a uh, neurotransmitter, acetylcholine, and it's triggered by calcium. So when the action potential goes through the axon terminal, it opens the voltage-gated calcium channel. And when this channel open, calcium flow in, because calcium is high outside, low inside. And calcium will trigger the vesicle fusion with the membrane. And when it fuses with the membrane, exocytosis, acetylcholine is released. And this gap is called synaptic cleft. It's a very small distance. Diffusion works pretty well. So acetylcholine is going to diffuse from uh, the neuron part to the muscle part. And the muscle part, that's the cell's membrane of the muscle. And they, in this part, they have a lot of nicotinic acetylcholine receptor waiting there. So they call this place motor and plate. When acetylcholine binds with nicotinic acetylcholine receptor and the iron channel open, so the sodium flow in is much faster than the potassium flow out. So in this motor end plate, they create a positive charge. They call it end plate potential. Now this signal needs to go through the whole cell membrane, sarcolemma, and through the T-tubule to every cell. And you need to tra you need to transfer the end plate potential to an electrical signal which can travel for long distance, and that's action potential. So the action potential is due to the voltage gated sodium and voltage gated potassium channel open. Apparently, when you create the end plate potential around here, this depolarization, the voltage change called depolarization, able to open the voltage gated sodium and voltage gated potassium channel. When the sodium channel opens, sodium flow in, inside become more positive. And when the potassium channel open, potassium flow out, so it go back to normal. Now this potential from the motor end plate start to walk, take one step to here. And this depolarization will trigger the opening of this pair of voltage gated sodium and voltage gated potassium channel. Now the action potential walk to here, so it will keep walking. So now the signal start from the motor end plate, go to the cell membrane because of the voltage gated sodium and potassium channel. It can walk through the cell membrane. And now we go to the T tubule. So from the cell membrane, sarcolemma, and the the action potential is generated, it will keep walking through the T-tubule. T-tubule, last time we talked about it, is the perpendicular structure to all the muscle fiber. It can transfer the action potential to every muscle fiber. So apparently on the T-tubule, they also have the voltage-gated sodium and potassium channel, so it will keep sending the signals through the T-tubule. And T-tubule connect with the terminal cisterna. That's the beginning part of SR. And it will send the signal to the SR, and it will open the calcium channel because SR is the container of calcium. When the calcium channel open, calcium flow out. And the rest of them is what you learned last time. Calcium will bind with tryponin, triple myosin shine away, and acting the myosin like two strong magnets. They glue together, create action potential. Uh, create the muscle contraction. Sorry, not action potential. This is the action potential. So the action potential 
uh, created by the muscle, it starts from minus 90 millivolt. The starting point is pretty low. Compared with neuron, it's about, about minus 70 millivolt. And the depolarization part is due to the opening of voltage-gated sodium channel. When the sodium channel opens, sodium flow in, so big increase, we call depolarization. Then the sodium channel close, potassium channel open, voltage-gated potassium channel open. Potassium gonna flow out. When the potassium flow out, the potassium it's gonna bring the voltage go back to normal. That's the repolarization. So this process takes two to three milliseconds. And that's the action potential. And after acetylcholine being released, it need to be taken back or being thrown away. And we use the enzyme called acetylcholine esterase. This the enzyme will disintegrate the acetylcholine. So it won't stay here forever to keep asking the muscle to contract. And when the calcium binds with triponin, that's what we learned last time. It binds with triponin, it will trigger the triple myosin. That's the green part, shine away, and acting the myosins will form the big uh, connecting structure called the cross bridge. So that's when the muscle contraction happen. And when they connect together, the head of the myosin automatically pull. So when they pull, the overlap model start. They overlap more. When they overlap more, the whole sarcomere becomes shorter. And that's muscle contraction. So this show you the power stroke. Connect power stroke. And after muscle contraction, you need the muscle relaxation. These two strong magnets, they glue together. You want to separate them, you need to use force. So you want to separate them, you need to use ATP. That's when the ATP kick in. And ATP causes the detachment of the head of the myosin to the actin. And when they detach, the head go back to normal. And that's the whole process of muscle contraction and relaxation. So in brief, the sacromere need to work, and the muscle contraction part require calcium. Calcium binds with troponin, and to trigger the contraction happen. The muscle relaxation part require ATP. So ATP need to bind with the uh, the head of myosin and trigger the detachment, so muscle can relax. And for the muscle to work properly, you need to keep going the contraction and relaxation cycle. So you need both calcium and ATP. And this show you the slice of the uh, the the filament structure. And with last time we talk about this compared with the muscle relaxation to the muscle contraction. This is the sarcomere structure, relaxation part, contraction part. So this is the summary we talked today from the from the exon terminal release neurotransmitter and by with the acetylcholine receptor in the motor end plate and create the end plate potential. This end plate potential will transfer to the action potential. So on the sarcolemma and whole T tubule, they have voltage gated sodium and potassium channel. They are able to transfer the end plate potential to the action potential. It will keep going through the whole T tubule and T-tube will connect with the terminal cisterna. And terminal cisterna is the beginning part of the SR. And the whole SR have calcium. So now it will trigger the calcium release. After calcium release, calcium will bind with triponin. Triple myosin shine away. Acting the myosin trigger a big power stroke, muscle contraction. After muscle contraction, ATP kick in. ATP will bind with the myosin head and cause the detachment, so muscle relaxation. And this compared with the muscle contraction and relaxation. Calcium is the molecule to trigger muscle contraction because it binds with, with triponin. So after calcium functions do its job, you need to put the calcium back to the SR and you need calcium pump. And calcium pump use the KTP as the energy source to pump the calcium back to the SR. So that's another reason for the muscle to work properly, you also need ATP. Okay, that's it.